Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, last week I showed, what, I guess the first 11 pages I've drawn for the 2020, um, my sketch warm-up, and asked for a bunch of comments, and I got a lot of great ones. So there were 72 comments, and I read through them all this morning, and found the common ones, and fortunately one of the most popular requests was on drawing mechs. And so I had already started around midweek drawing some mechs, uh, even before being prompted. Nice coincidence. Um, of course, there were a lot of questions or comments and requests on design. So we'll try to touch on some of those things today, but I think this one is going to be mostly about talking about mechs and drawing a little bit. Let's get started. Here is uh, the first page I did. And you'll see that there's quite a a variety, but they're all, you know, basic pivots, uh, all based on some, usually some form of animal I find it most interesting to think about. This one I was thinking about some form of gorilla. Same here, you see these large forearms and tiny little rear legs. Don't know what this one is, this is a little bit more dog-like. Uh, this one's a bit more maybe, you know, maybe cat-like way it's sort of squatting down ready to jump. Not sure maybe this is a bit more of a bull. These big horns. Um, let's look at there's some pivots. And I'm just trying when I design these to give it uh, the feeling that it could articulate. This is my very first sketch so I'm not trying to make it um, really perfect in the context of chasing the design all that much. Uh, but one thing I want to try and talk about a little bit on the design side is let's just look at this front this front leg. It's really very simple in that it's just this sort of pill shape, right? It's really a cylinder with a rounded off knee, a rounded off hip. Um, and what I try to do after a basic shape like that is then divide it in a way that gives it a bit of character and I try to try to apply a bit of a design language to it. So in this case, I'm using the same um, sort of arc and um, rotation around. So I'm twisting around the shape. My cut lines wrap around the shape. Uh, even the little vent cutouts, the vent cutouts here are meant to sort of show that the knee is curving under. I'm trying to basically make it more dynamic, usually. Uh, and that means not dividing things in a static way. So what I mean by that is that if I have uh, the section of the leg or arm here is not to divide the dimensions over this length equally. So I don't want to put, uh, say this is a cylinder and it's meant to rotate. Lower, lower leg rotates at a point anywhere you want to place it here. It could rotate here, but it could also rotate there. Um, and then there's a big pivot here. It could rotate, you know, front and back. What I wanted to do was think about where to put these brake lines. I don't want to put it dead center because that'll make these two sections equal. So what I do is drop it down, right, and get a little bit more distance to add some more dynamic sectioning. See, with this arm as well, this isn't dead center, it's a little off center. And that will add more dynamism to your designs. Um, also, you can use the wiggly line uh, to great effect to add a little bit of life to an otherwise mechanical object. Also, the idea of um, adding some asymmetry to a pose. So in this case, maybe these, these parts of the front legs are a bit symmetrical. Of course, these are roughly symmetrical. Um, and then this leg is pointed towards us. This leg is maybe bent out to the right add a symmetry uh, in the pose of the character just like this leg is moved forward so you see that this part of the leg is forward it's rotated here around the same shoulder on the other side and boom it goes forward and then you redraw this part that's a really fast way to do perspective is just do an offset and rotate um, it can be this one's sort of like a straight transfer right I just offset forward a little bit for the far leg so maybe the back legs are narrower than the front uh, and then I angle this one just a little bit over here and then technically that would drop down this point a little bit. You can make these connecting the dots 
um, with your pivots. And this one I thought was maybe sort of some soft material. So you put in some wrinkles and add some line weight after the fact. So let's go to the, the second page, which is the one I'll talk about today. These I have not finished inking yet. So all I've done so far is this step, which uh, the pins I'm gonna to use today, this is a, a toner, a Copic sketch pen, a toner one. And that's where all my first sketches usually start with a toner or any, any actually neutral, cool toner, doesn't really matter. Uh, but I usually use a one, sometimes even a zero, but I find a one is enough um, for me to see. And it's not really for anybody else to see, but I'm exploring proportion and stance before I start inking. Here's a couple more that have already been inked. And you'll see again, there's the loose uh, positioning of that far leg to add a little asymmetry. And this one's asymmetric anyway. It kind of has an overall symmetry in that there's these two weights across a, a beam, but one holds a person and the other one holds, I don't know what, maybe um, this person's falcon or something. It looks like a birdhouse up there. And then uh, it's a biped, so it's walking, so it has this central sort of pelvis, uh, hips, uh, reverse bending knees compared to humans, so it's more like chicken legs. And then another little secondary pivot there. This one is kind of vertical through here. This one's leaning back a little bit. This leg's a bit more vertical. This one's a bit more forward. And then this one, we throw a little marker. Maybe we'll do marker work uh, next week. So we'll just do some line drawing and talk about how to find the design within this one today. Here's a couple more. This one's more like a, some sort of funky bulldog thing that you ride. It's just got this kind of nice armored head, a very, very light torso. Again, you can't really see it entirely because I haven't added any marker to it um, to pull it out. Like, you know, this one has got more marker applied to it. And usually what I do, and same here, see how much easier it is to see the far side leg and the, the bottom of the torso um, in all of these, just because I've darkened down with a little bit of marker. And not much, this is only probably like a value three, probably at most, same with dividing the some material definition here. This is not even shading for light, this is just shading for materials and value graphics. And value graphics are those things that define whether it be a hole or a dark painted surface or a material change, independent of where the lighting is coming from. So I like to do this um, right away to make it look interesting and divide up the surfaces. And then I have another one that I just started blocking out the, um, the colors on. So this one is the one I'm using here and I've just started laying in some marker just as a fun test. So I did a print of this sketch. It's actually even smaller than the original. And I'm putting in some, blocking in some color graphics right now. And then I'll start to shade. I just started shading with some marker, this front leg a little bit. So you can get a hint of where that's going. So if that works out well, I could cover something like that in the future as well. Uh, let's get into this one. I'm using the um, Pilot High Tech C, one of my all-time favorite pens. Um, so I've got available a .25, which is what all of these are. It's kind of a worn out .25. And then I have a 3 and I have a 5. So let's start out with the lighter weight, always. And I don't, don't really worry about line weights until I know where all the lines are going. All right, I usually start with the... Uh, character head. I like to see, the reason that a lot of these have characters in them in the first place is not because I'm really imagining that much about how this thing's going to work or what it's used for. It's to add scale. Um, and here, and you'll see I just really, when they're small like this, it's really easy to come in and just start to indicate design elements. And what I mean by that is that it's really, you can get away with a lot of just a little scribble here or there to indicate a vent, a little, a little cut line. And it helps if you have drawn, I would say the best thing to draw to learn how to do this sort of quick indication of uh, mechanism 
is to study and draw some heavy equipment first and do that from observation. So it can be observation of photos, it could be observation on site somewhere. But if you draw those things, you'll input those into your memory. And then you'll know how to build proper realistic looking pivots and joints. And that becomes very helpful uh, when trying to invent your own version, which is what this is. I don't have any reference that I'm looking at. I'm just sort of winging it. And I've just drawn enough of them to know, um, you know, what looks interesting or makes it look more realistic. One of the things I like to do when I'm uh, doing these simple, sort of this is a simple side view, is that, keep in mind, it's kind of like a sphere, right? The sort of body torso, it's a bit stretched. You could think of it as like two spheres, one for the upper torso here and the, the rear, and then a couple of connected cylinders here, and then same at the back. So what I'd like to do is make sure that you get some nice foreshortening when you're getting things to wrap away. So this is like a big cylinder. So if there are any features on the head, there's kind of a head here. You know, I'm gonna to switch to the 0.3 so, you, so it's a bit more bold, even though it's a heavier line weight than I would use for this sketch. I think it's gonna make it easier to show up on uh, YouTube. So I'm gonna switch that up, go to a heavier, a heavier weight. It would make the, it's gonna make the drawing a little more clumsy uh, than I would like, but I think it's gonna be better for the camera. So here I'm starting with the silhouette. Now what I did right there was a little bit of a, what I call a little crisscross. So if you want to make something look organic, um, one of the ways you can do it is to have some fading lines where forms overlap. Let's look over here at this, this arm right here. You see the, these cutouts, uh, maybe a pivot cut line, but what you notice are these lines right in here that just fade here. And it's hard to do with a solid ink pen, of course. It's easier to do with ballpoint or pencil. But you can notice here there's a little bit of an overlap. And setting up those overlaps is really key to making something look more organic or more interesting. Let me just look on my other, my other page, see if I have a good example here. This one probably. And even, and even this one. So right there is a nice little overlap. Um, there's some nice little overlaps on the silhouette right here with this sort of stepping that happens. So if I was going to draw just a um, just a leg with maybe some sort of pivot up here at the top, what I want to do is I want to try and set up some overlaps that make this look. a bit more dynamic and just making up some sort of arm here with some mechanism or a pivot I should say at the bottom but you'll see I'm trying to be aware of the sections as I draw cut lines that they wrap into the silhouette and then let's go ahead and connect this line to that one I could just put a little bit of cross hatching there to make sure this turns under. We could go, in fact, we could just darken it if we wanted. Even with a straight up ink pen, you can do that. Let's do another one coming out of here. And it's going to end into some sort of little access panel or, or vent into there. So it's about getting these kind of a kind of rhythm going to the lines. and a harmony where they start to complement each other because they're all of a similar similar shape and they blend and run into each other so maybe that starts on a, a plane up here 
it's got sort of a an axis like this and then it's going to twist and turn and it's going to end up on a plane down here that's more vertical anyway so that's just a quick quick demonstration of what I'm what I'm thinking when wrapping um, design lines around a shape so let's see if we can apply some of that to this guy so I'm going to start and when I'm trying to do it when I try to do a nice sketch at the same time I'm trying to do a nice design one it's a super challenge uh, it's much easier to draw loose to find the design and then do an overlay but I like the challenge to try and do both simultaneously so it forces you to think a little bit more uh, before you commit to the line. So now I'm just starting to establish some sort of language to these lines. I want to have a pivot where the whole the whole leg could turn right in here. So I know I want this to be you know, roughly symmetrical. And my horizon line, I can see a little bit of the ground here. So my horizon, I'm going to say, is right up in, in here somewhere. So I'm trying to carefully drop in a couple of very, very thin ellipses there. I want this to look kind of strong. I want the, re the relationship of this shoulder shape to mirror a little bit of this kind of blunted off round shape. So I could put... You know, instead of doing a pure circle or part of a cylinder there, you'll see now I'm hinting that there's some sort of panel that wraps out the front. Let's do a little perforation detail on it. And you'll see these have to get thinner and thinner as they wrap out to the silhouette. So remember the degree of these ellipses. We'd see more of them here. So they're fatter and then they wrap away. And that's, I gotta say, that's one of my favorite things to do when doing sketches like this, whether it's a spaceship or a mech. Maybe there's a bit of a, re a reveal for a landing area where this shoulder plugs into the torso or the body. And all throughout here, and it's probably something, you, know, you can maybe just see it on camera, is that there are some shapes that are hinted at with my marker sketch. And what I'm doing is I'm just picking those out. So if I see these little three blips right there, I might just outline those like that and then come back and connect and maybe fill them in with another little shape. This is gonna turn down here. Now I'll reinforce the silhouette to get this line, heavy line work working throughout. Let's do that up here as well. Pop out our character a little bit. Uh, looks like there are some little shapes to be found in here. Some sort of like bellows or ribbing that allows some movement through this part of the sort of waist area. And you'll see I have a lot of these overlaps. So I just draw a line past, then I come back and notch it from below for a little, a little vent. And that actually relates back to what's happening on this one. Okay, let's get into this arm a bit more. So when you're confident in the design, you can draw, of course, much faster. When you're not, and you're trying to find the design as you go, then you have to slow down. You have to pre-visualize the shapes you're about to drop in and whether or not those are going to work with the shapes that you've already established. And that is the trick in having them happen sort of fast and fluid or sort of stubborn and you know, cantankerous and clumsy 
which of course you get you get all those things in doing just one sketch. Some parts are going to go great, other parts are going to be clumsy, and you'll get better and better at how to save those parts that aren't going well, either by hiding them with another detail, which is quite common, or pre-visualizing them so that they don't happen that way in the first place. But it's always a challenge. Never, never gets really, I would say, easy. It does get easier. I think the thing that gets easier is your ability to do the line work. I have a decent amount of uh, control of the pen, even though I haven't been drawing much this year yet. So what gets better is your ability to control the pen, but maybe not um, at the same time your ability to come up with a nice design. There are two, there are two very different things. They go a little bit hand in hand in so much as when you start to get better line control, you generally start to draw more attractive shapes. It's got some sort of funky knee here, double double jointed knee. Throw some little kneecap panels on here. Let's run this to the back for the and the legs all folded up. So when I get sort of crunch these together and have a little shape here so it looks like they're meant you know I knew this was going to fold whoever designed this this one pivots up and it nests into this little notch there's kind of an overlap this one sticks out further overlaps on top of the thigh shape let's break up that surface back there and this is going to come down here to some sort of a pivot a lot of times in these areas you can just indicate some circles, some little push rods maybe uh, to, to help with the articulation or make the articulation happen, some pivots where they attach, and if you just want to float some panels and put in some dark gaps, that also can work nicely. So just hinting that there's some sort of mechanism in there. You don't have to go in and design it all right now. But you need to know that you want to make it look realistic enough and you need to sort of indicate to people that you understand there is something in there, right? even just as a note for yourself to go back and resolve the area. So I get a little, get a little scribbly through here. Try and speed it up. I don't want this one to take up your entire Sunday. Now that's that. Um, I think when I do the symmetry, I will use a lighter line weight. These things become kind of uh, meditative little puzzles as you're working them out. Try to avoid having cut lines run into each other. So you see I put a cut line on this panel just ahead of the arm, but it's behind it. So I didn't want to have this cut line come in here and touch exactly that one. It will look like it visually connects. And in fact, it's a little too close. So I should have probably put it up here. Let's just put in another one up there. Or I should have put it in here. So I would say this one or this one are better. But it's ink and I committed to that. So now I have to live with it. One of the ways I could hide it later is I could make this a value change through here like it's a different material. And I could use this cut line instead of that one. And I sort of hide that within. There's another little overlap with some sort of chin. Let's establish a little inset pivot here. Let's do similar 
uh, on the front to the rear, it'll look like there's maybe an overlap of some similar parts or at least uh, technology or you know engineering thought of using the same type of mechanisms. So I'll put a little cap on there. Let's do up here, similar. Okay, now I'm going to try and speed up a little bit. Uh, a lot of you asked for a real-time drawing, so I'm not going to speed up the video. I'm just going to try and speed up physically myself. It's got some little divided sharp little toes up front. I like to ground these a little with a little shadow, just a little contact shadow where the feet are first and then it helps me set the other foot and the other side. Again I'll use the, you know, we see a little bit of dimension on this one before it splits over to that other foot. Let's add a little, a couple little Part lines, material change. It's just miscellaneous tech, honestly. Uh, make it make it interesting and detailed in some areas, usually around the joints, and then make it simple and let your eye have a break in other areas. Oh, see, those are going to connect right there, and I don't want that because they're they're separate pieces. So I want to come back in here and, and break that a little bit and then we'll add some sort of detail to it to try and offset from the back. Let's get a little bit more line weight happening up in here from when we switched from the light pin that we started with. Uh, maybe this is some sort of signal light. I don't know. Don't have to decide now. Maybe this line should continue and then echo that one when it wraps around. I always remember you're drawing like this sphere. So get try to get either the silhouette to influence the lines that come in. So you see I drew a silhouette like this with a little notch and a point. Well the point should generate a line. So that comes inward and then I put a little scoop. This would get shaded darker because it's in shadow maybe put a little cut line across there. So this may be a different material on the underside versus the upper. Okay, let's very quickly put in the far side legs. So where is my vanishing point side view? I see I hinted here with marker that it's going to be here because I can see the other, other leg forward of this one. And this one is a little bit back, so it looks like my vanishing point's right in here somewhere. I'm looking up at this ellipse a little bit, so it's probably right up in here in the middle of the body. I think that's the easiest area to generally locate it. So I'm not spending too much time um, working out the perspective and seeing the underside of the character's head, for instance. This is really meant to be a pretty quick sketch. In fact, we could hide this entire part of that elbow on the other side and just show this part. So let's just do that, keep it a little bit quicker. This is just one big line down. We could bend it a little bit, give it a little bit of asymmetry. We see a little bit less here because it's a bit closer to our VP. And I'm just trying to draw in the silhouette like this so this is bending down into this is sort of directly across we don't really see much you could hint at it a little bit there if you wanted to uh, this one again same we could lift the knee a little bit so I'm trying to redraw this little piece here offset up from a pivot an imaginary pivot back here in the hip so try to rotate that upward and that means this guy comes down and we get a little bit of change there. So there's a little taper that's created, which makes it a little bit more dynamic. Then we have to 
just hint that that's round. That's all going to be hidden underneath. So that's up. So we could take this guy and go down a little bit. We'll get a little crisscross here for that one. And so, and then we could pivot here. Once this is moved down, this can pivot this way a little bit. So I could redraw that through there. And that'll lift that a little bit. So let's kick that up. And we could bend this one a little if we wanted as well. And we got those little three points. This is here. These are going to get a little bit closer together, but I don't want them to touch necessarily. Okay, so that leg, the knee went up, then the sort of ankle area went down, and that forced this forward. This could also change, but that's the rough idea. So that's kind of it for the line drawing component. Now, of course, we could make lines heavier. My general uh, approach to that is to I have a whole video on line weight, but you'll see I do overlaps, get heavier. You see this leg right here has a heavier silhouette outline than uh, this leg over here. But so this is heaviest over the body. Then the body overlaps the far leg and the far legs are left very, very light to push them further away. Same sort of thing here. You see the overlap. This one I added quite a bit of line weight because I was having trouble getting this hand to overlap this leg. So I tried to use value for that. I dropped this leg a bit more into shadow or darken its surface just because it could be painted darker. That helps to pop the arm a little bit. But these things with legs and you know lots of limbs overlapping, leaving interesting holes and things can get pretty tricky to, to make sense of until there's a color or value background. That makes it a little easier. So I've got a couple minutes left on this um, camera before it shuts off. It only does 20 minutes at a time. Let me take a, uh, let's take a number three, toner three. Let's just hit back the far legs. And we'll just treat them as one shape, as a silhouette. And we'll do that for the far side. Two for the front leg, two for the back leg. Something like that. You can also make this an opportunity to add a bit more life to it by not exactly going to the lines. And what I mean by that is you can you can you know take a little freedom and, and just drop in some value and don't have it exactly match all your lines. So in this case, I want to push a bit of these little shadows. I'm just gonna do let it fade quickly. I want I'm gonna see this as a whole different material right here. So I'm gonna darken that in. Uh, with a number three all together, and then maybe I'll come back and hit it one more time. Let's take this panel, would be nice if this was a different material, because it works as a nice background for the edge of this leg. And maybe that continues through there, and we'll go and we'll darken up to that cut line position that I like better than this one. And that kind of hides this one a little bit. So you can see I'm trying to set up these overlaps usually make the character sort of cockpit details and character darker seat back. Uh, this panel maybe should be the same as that. And maybe he's got a bit of a dark noggin up here. Maybe this panel up front, a little bit darker. And do I want to do, yeah, let's do this one. That'll divide up this, this arm nicely. And if I made this edge here also dark, it would blend to the background. So I don't want to do that. I want to let that stay light. Now let's grab a, uh, this could also be darker. And a little vent here. And let's do this one as well. And down here for the overlap. So a little bit of ambient inclusion inside there. Maybe the bottoms. I'm not really rendering the uh, forms per se. I'm really just assigning values to certain materials and surfaces to help uh, make it easier to understand the shapes. 
Really, I'm looking for separation at this point for my overlaps of the legs to the torso and also for zones like the pilot up here or driver. And let's push this one even darker. Now that I've gone on, this is a four, by the way. So let's push that quite a bit darker. I really want that leg to pop out. But I also want the torso to be connected behind there. So I'm going to go back to a three. I'm just going to quick splash in a little bit of value here. Just from the underside upward. To connect that piece to this one. And now it starts to look like it's continuous. And when you're laying in the value like this, you really just want to sneak up on it. So what I mean by that is you can't make markers lighter, easily anyway. You can only go darker, so don't go there too fast. This paper I'm working on is just a heavy newsprint. Actually, it takes the, takes the marker nicely. It doesn't bleed through. I have no idea what brand it is. I just found it in my flat file. It didn't have a, didn't have a cover on it. You'll notice here, I'm not making everything the full, this is a five, by the way, I'm not making all of it dark. Just getting some separation inside those darker areas now. Start to outline. Now we can come back with a heavier pen, like a number five, let's say, uh, a 0.5 on the high-tech side of things. Maybe this entire joint is very dark. Let's just knock it all back. Then maybe this one should all be dark. Again, I probably should have snuck up on that a bit because if I go too dark, you're not going to be able to bring it back. Let's take a six. Now that this is supposed to be a six, let's really darken that part of it over there. All right, I think we'll call that done. For today so a little little shape discussion uh, while drawing trying to ink something maybe next week we'll do some of the the lightweight marker the t1 blockouts talk about proportion stance and establishing a nice foundation to then start doing that inking on top of but i think that's going to be it for today and i'll get back to uh, putting some marker and some nice line weight on these other sketches. And then I'll scan it and throw it on my ArtStation account so you can see the higher resolution sketch because obviously a lot is lost in this sort of a recording. All right, everyone have a great week. Stay safe and be well. Bye-bye.